According to some experts, we're at the beginning of a fourth industrial revolution, and it's one that'll make those that came before it look like mere dress rehearsals for the main event. But what is it and why should you care? Sometimes it seems that human history has been one big continuous technological roller coaster ride. First we discovered fire and then agriculture, then came the wheel and then cities and manufacturing and trading, followed by steam power, electricity, mass production, synthetic chemicals, computers, the internet, gene editing, blockchain, self-driving cars, artificial intelligence. Scientists are now even talking about growing people in laboratories and one day possibly downloading our brains into computers. This is one mind-blowingly crazy technological roller coaster ride we're on, and it's getting faster and weirder by the day. If you're into tech, of course, this is an incredibly exhilarating ride, but it's also a scary one, especially when you think about what might go wrong. Over the past 300 years, one wave after another of technological revolutions have impacted our lives. It started with the first industrial revolution when we discovered how to fully harness the power of steam. Then, as we entered the 20th century, we worked out how to mass-produce products using electricity. This led to a second industrial revolution that lasted all the way up to the 1970s when we discovered digital computers. And then we found ourselves in yet another revolution. But now we're going through a fourth industrial revolution, and it's one that's so radical it makes the previous three look like child's play. What makes this fourth industrial revolution so different is that we're well on the way to developing the ability to design and engineer the world around us using the very atoms and molecules it's made of. If you think of atoms and how they're arranged in materials as the digital code of the real world, we're learning how to hack this code and in the process to change our reality. You can see this in areas like gene editing and synthetic biology, where we are quite literally learning how to hack biology by reprogramming DNA. But we're also learning to hack stuff that isn't alive by using atoms and molecules in new ways. Using nanotechnology and other forms of advanced manufacturing, for instance, we're creating designer materials that can be used in everything from our clothes and our computers to robots, a spacecraft, even the food we eat. But this isn't the half of it. What makes this fourth industrial revolution so mind-boggling is the way that we're vastly enhancing this mastery of living and non-living stuff with an incredibly powerful secret source. And this secret source is cyberspace. In the third industrial revolution we discovered digital computing and we created a virtual world of bits and bytes and we're now quite literally using this to add a fifth dimension to the world we live in. Of course we're all familiar with the three physical dimensions up, down, left, right and front, back and we're used to thinking of time as a fourth dimension but cyberspace allows us to work outside of these more conventional dimensions and dip in and out of them at will. In other words, cyberspace provides us with a back door to re-engineering and redesigning our reality. It's a bit like the science fiction idea of hyperspace in that it gives us ways to achieve things in the real world that would be impossible if we couldn't sometimes step outside of it. This is really mind-blowing stuff, but it's also a little disquieting because we're in completely uncharted territory and we have remarkably little idea of what might go wrong. Of course we have some hints. We know, for instance, that we're now at a point where if a technology gets out of hand we can't simply turn the clock back. There is no easy reset button when you're hacking reality. And we realize that if we're not careful, a lot of people could get hurt in this fourth industrial revolution by losing their jobs, for instance, or their rights, or even their lives. Even more worryingly, perhaps, we're beginning to develop artificial intelligences that live in cyberspace and that we don't fully understand or control. What's even more concerning is that just as we can use cyberspace to hack reality, so can they. This could get weird fast if we're not careful, and this is why 
everyone should care about the fourth industrial revolution and where it's taking us. Because unless we learn how to develop and use our new technological capabilities responsibly, this could end up being one roller coaster ride of a revolution that, for some people, leaves the rails with catastrophic consequences. The good news is, though, that there are people working on this. For instance, in the School for the Future of Innovation in Society at Arizona State University, we're training the next generation of experts and leaders with the skills they need to navigate us safely through this revolution. And organizations like the World Economic Forum and others are working on new ways to ensure we can meet the emerging challenges while reaping the tremendous benefits that this revolution offers. Because without a doubt, with the right understanding, people and skills, this fourth industrial and technological revolution could radically improve our lives. But to do this, it's going to take an equally radical revolution in how we develop and handle the technologies it involves responsibly and beneficially.